Hi there, I'm Jeremy Krug, and in this video we're moving on with the next part of Unit 6, Section 6. We're going to do some more practice with enthalpy of solution and how to calculate delta H. If you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, go ahead and do that. Click that thumbs up button if you learned something from my video, and subscribe and ring that bell. That way you won't miss out on this uh, complete AP Chemistry course. Now, before we jump into this next example, let's talk about the difference between Q and delta H because in the last several videos we've been working with both of these values and sometimes it seems like they're very similar to each other but we need to understand that there's a fundamental difference between these two. Now Q, whenever we talk about Q equals MC delta T for example, Q is how much heat, how much thermal energy is actually being transferred in the process. Notice that the unit for Q will be joules in the SI framework of measurement. On the other hand, when we're working with delta H, that's the change in enthalpy for the reaction. The units are different. We're not just talking about joules, it's joules per mole or kilojoules per mole. So in order to solve for delta H, we have to do essentially two calculations. We have to find the joules, and that will be in usually Q equals MC delta T, and then we have to calculate the moles, which will be a, a stoichiometry uh, problem. Now normally, in these problems that we work, we're normally going to express delta H as delta H with this little uh, degree sign here. Now I think this is the first time that we're looking at this in this AP Chemistry course, so it, it is worth it to look at what that degree sign actually means. When you see that degree sign on a value, and it's not just going to be delta H, it'll be other things later on in this course, it's referring to the fact that we're at standard conditions. And these are the standard conditions that are most common in laboratories if you go around the world. So we're talking about standard conditions which are 25 degrees Celsius, you know, pretty close to what most laboratories will be set at, about one atmosphere pressure, and 1.00 moles per liter concentration in the case uh, of any solutions that you might be working with. So if you see that degree sign, you know that we're at standard conditions. And to make our lives easier, usually we just deal with standard conditions. Now let's do an example here. It says a chemist mixes 30.0 milliliters of 0 0.500 molar silver nitrate with 30 milliliters of 0 0.500 molar potassium chloride, stirs, and monitors the temperature while the solutions mix. A white precipitate forms, and the temperature rises from 23.00 degrees Celsius to 26.80 degrees Celsius. Write the net ionic equation for the reaction and determine the delta H of the reaction in kilojoules per mole. Assume the solution has a density of 1.00 grams per, per milliliter and a specific heat capacity of 4.18 joules per gram degree Celsius. So kind of a long problem. Looks like there's a lot going on here. A couple things that you want to isolate. We're being asked to write two things here. The net ionic equation, which we learned how to do already, way back in unit four, and the delta H. That's kilojoules per mole. Now let's focus on the net ionic equation first. Now like we learned back in, back in unit four, we know that we have these two solutions. We have silver nitrate, and since both of these are soluble, we know that they're going to, to exist in their ionic form. So silver nitrate will actually be silver cations and nitrate anions swimming around, and then the potassium chloride will be potassium cations and chloride ions swimming around in solution as well. We know that these ions are going to try to swap partners, and so we'll have something like this. And our job is to determine which of those two pairs is going to make something that is an insoluble solid, or as we call it, a precipitate. Well, if you think back to your solubility rules, you will realize that it's silver getting with chloride. That means that potassium and nitrate ions aren't doing anything. They're just the, the spectator ions here. So when we write the net ionic equation, it's going to be silver cations aqueous plus chloride anions aqueous 
they'll get together and form a product of solid silver chloride, AgCl. So that's the net ionic equation. So that's the, the first part of this. Now, let's do the second part where we're trying to determine the actual delta H of this, of this reaction right here that, that we just wrote. It doesn't matter which order we do this in, we're going to have to find the kilojoules, we're going to have to find the moles. Uh, let's just do the moles part of it first this time. I think last time we did it in the other way. Let's just do the moles first this time. So in our equation, in our net ionic equation, let's think about how many moles of silver ions we're starting with. And this is just a simple stoichiometry calculation. We have 30 milliliters, which will actually be 0 0.0300 liters. And let's multiply that by the 0 0.500 moles per liter. And when you multiply that out, you find that we're starting with 0 0.0150 moles of silver ions. Now for chloride, it's done the same way. We take the 0 0.03 liters of chloride, times that by 0.5 moles per liter, and of course, that's going to give us the same number, 0 0.0150 moles of chloride. So let's think about this in terms of the stoichiometry. If we're starting with 0.015 moles of silver ions and 0.015 moles of chloride ions, how many moles of silver chloride will we get as our product? Well, it's a 1 to 1 to 1 ratio as you look at the, uh, the moles here, the mole ratio. So that means that we're going to have 0 0.0150 moles of silver chloride produced. It's not twice that. It's not, it's not adding them together. It's just 1 to 1 to 1. The mole values will be the same. So we're going to be making 0 0.0150 moles of silver chloride. So that's the moles part of this. Now let's do the joules or the kilojoules part of this next. So to do this, we're going to have to use Q equals MC delta T. So we're going to do this just like we did in the last example in the last video. We're solving for Q, so that's our unknown. The mass, what is the total mass of this solution? Well, we have 30 milliliters being added to 30 milliliters, so that's a total of 60 milliliters total. We're assuming that the volumes are additive. So 60 milliliters, and if the solution has a density of one gram per milliliter, that means that the mass of the solution will be 60 grams. So that's our M. Now the C, the specific heat of the solution, it tells us in the problem, will be 4.18 joules per gram degree Celsius. And that delta T is easy to calculate too because it's going from 23.00 degrees Celsius up to 26.8. So that's a, a rise of 3.80 degrees Celsius. So we can take our calculator and multiply these numbers by each other and we get a value for Q of about 953 joules. Now, I'm going to go ahead and turn this into a negative 953 joules. Now there are a couple reasons for this and some students get a little confused as to why we do the sign change. A couple ways to, uh, to think about this. The first way is think about this as the fact that this is an exothermic process. If the temperature of the solution is rising, that tells us that this has to be exothermic. So the delta H is going to have a negative value. So heat is released. So I'm going to put a negative there. Okay, so anytime you have a temperature rising in that solution, it's got to be exothermic, delta H is negative. Another way to think about it, and this is, this is the same thing, this is just a different way of thinking about it. Um, whenever you take the temperature of a solution, remember, we are measuring the temperature change of the surroundings, not the system. The water in that, in that calorimeter actually is part of the surroundings. It's not really possible for us to measure directly the temperature change of the system because the system is solely composed of the silver ions and the chloride ions and the silver chloride that's produced. And we can't really measure that. So we have to measure the temperature of the surroundings. So since we're measuring the, the, the temperature change of the surroundings, we have to flip it flip the sign to find the, the temperature change, or the heat change in this case, of the, 
of the system. So that's why I had to, to flip the sign there. A couple different ways to think about it. The net result is the same. Now, if I want to go ahead and change this to kilojoules, that's just, of course, uh, point, or rather negative, 0.953 kilojoules. So now I'm ready to go right ahead and calculate delta H. So it's kilojoules per mole. So I just got the kilojoules. That's the negative 0.953 kilojoules. And we calculated the moles to be 0 0.0150 moles. So when I divide the numerator by the denominator, I get an answer of about negative 63.5 kilojoules per mole. That's the delta H of this reaction. Hope you learned something from this video. video. If you did, please uh, smash that thumbs up button. Hope you're subscribed. If not so, please consider doing that. That, that really would mean a lot to me. Helps the algorithm out a lot too if you uh, like and, and leave a comment down there. In the next video, we're moving on to one of the ways, a different way, to calculate delta H for a reaction in Unit 6, Section 7. Join me for that video.